Hello and welcome everyone to the High National Certificate Level 4, Unit 8, Innovation and Commercialization. We are going to cover learning outcome 2 today. This is Saida Moshida Sokra. I will be conducting the lecture today. So today we are planning to cover the different types of innovation, the use of innovation funnel to manage new solution and ideas, the four P's of innovation space strategy, the development of frugal innovation in response to necessity versus market-driven innovation. So we will first look at uh, the importance of innovation in an organization. So why organization need to be innovative? Innovation is a vital in the workplace because it gives companies an age to penetrate markets faster and provide a better connection in developing markets, which can lead to bigger opportunities, especially in developed countries. So innovation can also help develop original concepts while giving the innovator a proactive, confident attitude to take risks and get the things done. So when a company has an innovative culture, it will grow easily, even though the creative process is not easy and many test and trial processes are required in order to finalize the final product. So there are four components which lead as an important source for innovation to an, for an organization. So the first is a competitive advantage, next coming the maximizing the return on investment, increased productivity, and impact on the company culture. So how competitive advantage helps being innovative for an organization? The competitive advantage means necessary advancement in capabilities that provides an age in comparison to competitors of the industry. So the competitive advantage is accomplished when a firm can create value in a product or in a process that goes beyond the production cost and that cannot be imitated by the competitors. So the competitors cannot copy and reach those levels. So in case of the position of a firm over its competitor or over the industry, so the competitive advantage can be against the competitors or even in the industry as well. Maximizing return on investment according to Global Innovation 1000, there's a clear revenue of 11% growth in companies that are more innovative. So this shows the number that companies not only grow faster when they're innovative, but they are more profitable than rest of the competitors. Increased productivity. So the improved productivity and efficiencies makes work more meaningful and less time are needed in order to perform those tasks. The more time you're able to spend on tasks that have a direct impact on your business, such as improving processes, involving problems, or having conversation with your customers, so the more likely you're able to actually reduce costs, just increase the turnover, and provide your customers with better solutions uh, that's going to benefit, that's going to be beneficial for your customers. Positive impact on the company culture. So innovation practices can help build a culture of continuous learning, growth, and personal development. So when you keep on innovating lots of products from your company, so you culture a culture of innovation in your company. So this type of innovative environment can gain motivate people to constantly improve the way and that their team work. So the, coming to the four P's of innovation, so the first is a paradigm innovation, the second comes a product innovation, third is a position innovation, and fourth is a process innovation. If you look at the diagram, innovation can be of two types, right? It can be incremental or radical. The incremental innovations are doing what we do in a better form, whereas radical innovation are doing something or innovating something that's completely different. The four P's of innovation, the product innovation, so this is the change in the product, this is the change in the core product, which an organization offers to the customers, whereas a process innovation is the change in a way that they are created and delivered to the customers. Position innovation is a change in the context in the which the products are being introduced, or in other words, where the target of the offering lies and the, that the story is told about, with a position innovation, you are changing your target customers. Maybe you're producing or providing service to babies. You're customizing your products towards child now, but now you're thinking of increasing your line and targeting your products to senior citizens, to middle-aged people. So you're ch changing your position, you're changing your target customers. So that's position innovation. 
If you look at paradigm innovation, this is the ch change in the underlying mental model, which frames the organization. This is not alternatively how the company frame what it does. So it's a change in the mindset. As we see, the companies are now going green. So this is the mental set. And they are looking at the environment. They are producing their products in an environmental friendly way. If you look at the examples for the four piece of innovation, we can take the company BIC as an example for it. So BIC was founded as a manufacturer for ball pens, but after several breakthrough and aggressive marketing campaign, the company started dominating the market for cheap yet reliable ball pens. So after looking at the company for the completely different angle, the decision maker realized that the company could also be seen as a disposable plastic product company and shifted their paradigm accordingly. So can we see, if you look at the paradigm innovation example here, they're now focusing on disposable plastic, looking at the environment, so they're changing their mindset rather than being cheap, serving customers with cheap often, they're now thinking of serving customers with disposable, uh, disposable plastic products. If we look at product innovation, so they started to expand their range of products to include this disposable lighters, razors, which they could reuse some of the materials that are provided as a good grip on the ballpoint pen. So from the example, we can see BIC has not only serving pens these days, they're providing disposable lighters, razors to serve their customers. If we look at process innovation, BIC pressed for cheaper prices for their newly added product line and thus innovated the manufacturing and distributing process. So they are changing the process, they're serving their customers, they are changing their tagline as cheaper price products. So this is an innovation in the process. If you look at position innovation, furthermore, Big decided to target specific age and gender groups with different products such as female and male razor or secret pocket lighters and the big mega lighter for BBQ and kitchen gears. So you see they are targeting different target customers from the market to serve their product. Moving on, what is innovation funnel? The innovation funnel is a mechanism that means continuous streaming of innovative ideas and prototypes can be screened for viability. So it's often called as funnel management process. It's a popular approach used by different companies in order to bring out the realistic ideas and screen out the ideas which are not realistic. The strategies and action plan can be finalized. So at the heart of the innovation funnel is the idea of the large number of innovation pro projects, including those that are their very early in Pakesi and scrutinized and refined. Think of like a physical funnel where there are lots of different innovative ideas floating at the top, but at the bottom level, we see far fewer in the bottom level, right? When we screen down through the innovative funnel, we screen out the ideas that are not feasible for the company and we carry it for, with the ideas that are realistic that we can bring into real life. So only the best and most viable ideas will remain while the other will be filtered out. As well as working out viability, it's a great way of prioritizing objectives. If you look at the diagram, the innovation funnel consists of four different ideas, opportunities, technologies, and products. So these are the four components of the innovating funnel, right? So the innovation funnels have opportunities in the market, the trends that are currently going on, the ideas that are available in order to so solve those opportunities and adapt to the trends, the technological advancement that we can bring to the market, and finally the product and the end that we serve to our customers. So the opportunity assessment, here the organization analyzed through the market data, customer knowledge, and other sources. So they do a market research in order to know what customers are looking for, what kind of opportunity exists in the market, what new product they can bring into the market, what product extension they can offer to their customers. If we look at the inside bed ideation, so based on what kind of opportunity is appropriate to fit for the company strategy, the next step is to ideate different kinds of product or offer that product to capitalize on this opportunity. So this draws heavily on insights about the market and the target customers and could take form of brainstorming, co-creating, 
with customers, conducting market research such as survey, focus group, online communities, and crowdsourcing. So in this I, uh, process, you generate the ideas, you conduct focus group, you interact with customers, and you try to know what type of product they're looking for, or what are, they, are your products that you're planning to serve the customers be beneficial for them or not? Conceptualization. So at this stage, the team designs the actual product for the top idea that came out through the ideation stage. So this might include packaging, mock-ups, advertising copy, different configuration of the product and feature. So this is when we design your product, you come up with the packaging, what sort of advertisements are you gonna conduct, who are your target customers, how you reach through your advertisement to your target customers. After that, you evaluate and benchmark. So this is the next stage. You go back after to go back to the target customers and test different concepts. So this can include choice modeling or even actual user testing. So you can conduct a pilot study. You can soft launch your product to your target customers and ask them, do you want to review my product? Give us a feedback, how you like our product or not. So based on that feedback from the test, it may take sense to irritate on the concept and then retest. So you bring your customers, ask for their feedback, and after they get the feedback, after you get the feedback, you innovate your product, you update your product according to the customer requirements, and then you send those updated products that you have developed after getting the feedback to your customers and tell them, try one more time and see, does that meet your requirement or not? So when your customer says, yes, this is what we all wanted, or might be the, the case that your customer says really that there was no innovation or there was no improvement according to our feedback. So this is the time when you decide, do you want to launch your product or no? You decide whether you go with the product or you don't go with the product. So after testing completed and feedback has been gathered on interrelation, analysis relevant of concepts with the best chance for successes, the executive must take go or not go decision on whether or not the new product should be launched or the product should not be launched, taking into account the evaluation and benchmarking results, but also factors such as manufacturing costs, margins, and other items that are unrelated to the customer preference should be taken into consideration before you plan to launch or your product or you decide to stop launching your product. So if you plan to go with the product launching, then you launch a, pro a product, assuming that at least one concept is given the go ahead and it's launched into the market, the idea has come into life. So this is the innovation where it came into real life. So it, it exists, the innovation is being executed. If you look at the benefits of the innovation funnel, so when you have, when you go through an innovative funnel, only the high quality ideas are developed through the innovation process. So when you have the only the high quality ideas that you carry forward, you have the best ideas that you can give the best product to your customers. So the definition of the objectives are really clear to your organization. You can set accurate budget targeting your customers, what type of product you're serving to them, what type of budget you require for your marketing campaigns, what type of budget you require in order to produce the unit to serve your customers. So this is an efficient use of resources because when you do your budgeting, you know what type of resources you will require and you will accumulate your resources according to your budget. So the, this is also effective in reducing the time between the start of the development process and the commercialization because you have conducted the feedback from your customers and now the time is much more shorter and it's easier for you if your product satisfies your customers and you plan to launch your product, so the time between your product innovation or product development and your commercialization is reduced now. So if you look at innovation start strategy, innovation strategy is all about building the capacity to work in a complex or changing environment. So it's about building routines, capability to make innovation happen. So it's also being able to adapt to the change routine in the world shape. So this is a dynamic of capability, innovation strategy to be shared and communicated so that everyone in this organization understand what innovation strategy are we going to adopt and so that they can also contribute to the innovation strategy. So at the heart of the innovation strategy are the two core three questions. So 
at first we analyze what could we do? What can we do in order to serve our customers? Then we select a process, right? So selection, what we are going to do, how are we gonna satisfy our customers? How are we gonna be innovative? After we solve those two questions, third question comes is implementation. So how are we going to do this? If you look at the screen, the innovation matrix, the main types of innovation. So the first we see is sustaining. So the first point in innovation matrix is sustaining. The second one come as disruptive innovation. Third one is incremental innovation. And the fourth one is radical innovation. If you look at the diagram from the bottom, we can see the technological technology newness is, is, is on the one axis and the impact on the market is the other axis. So we see for incremental innovation, the technological newness is low and the impact on the market is also low. Whereas for sustaining, the technological newness is really low, but the impact on the market is high. If we look at disruptive innovation, the technological newness is also high and the impact on the market is also high. Same for radical innovation. In radical innovation, the technological newness is really high, but the impact on the market is low. We will have a deep look on it through the next slide. So incremental innovation is a series of small improvements or upgrade to the existing products or services that the company is offering now. Although incremental innovation does not create new markets and often does not leverage radically new technology, it can attract higher paying customer because it fulfills the customer needs identified and their behavioral on, from the feedback or the, according to their behaviors. Disruptive innovation, on the other hand, is a theory that refers to the concept of product and services that creates new value in the network, either by entering the existing market or by creating new, completely new products for new market. So in the beginning, disruptive innovation have lower performance when measured by the traditional value metrics, but has different aspects that are valued by small segments of the market. So this type of innovation can often capable of turning non-customers into your customers, but, that, but does not necessarily appeal to the needs of the, and preference of the mainstream customers of, that you want to target, or at least not just yet at the beginning stage of the innovation. Sustaining innovation on, is the opposite of disruptive innovation. As it exists in the current market and instead of creating new products or new value in the market, so it improves and grows the existing one by satisfying the needs of the customer. So sustaining innovation continues to grow the market slowly, no longer in the same portion. So at this point, the focus shifts from increasing profit rather than being innovative. If you look at the example, the most demanding customers are at the top and the less demanding customers at the bottom. If you look at sustaining innovation, they have an upward sloping pitch. So you see the sustaining cost is tending to move upwards, whereas the disrupting, uh, disruptive innovation, there's no actual format that they follow. So it's a disrupt in the market, they out of nowhere create something really innovative and lead the market. Radical innovation is rare as it has the similar characteristics of disruptive innovation, but it's different in a way that the uh, simultaneously use revolutionary technology and a new business model. So technological innovation, such as personal computer, the internet are example of radical innovation. So when personal computers were first innovated, so those were the radical innovation that had occurred in the past ages. So this, this disruptive innovation provide our society with a platform to build on top leading the highly accelerated economic growth. So according to ARK Invest, an investment management company, there is a new and new bigger wave of radical innovation so that they consider it to be verge of becoming the mainstream. These are robotics, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, energy storage, and 
gener uh, genome sequencing. Other type of innovation in business, so we can see a model on the screen. First, uh, the innovation model is divided into three parts. It's first offering configuration, second offering, and third is experience. So this is a profit model, networking structure, process, product performance, product system, service, channel, brand, and customer engagement. So all these are types of the innovation in the business where business focuses. What is frugal innovation then? So frugal innovation is a term increasingly used to describe an approach to innovation, which is simple and sustainable. It grew out of experience and location where shortage of key resources required ingenious solution to the problem. So where their simplicity of such innovation permits their widespread diffusion. So the process of frugal innovation discovers new business models, reconfigures value chains, and redesign product to serve users who face extreme affordability constraints. So simple, in simple words, frugal innovation provides functional solution through few resources for many who have little means. So look at the more details of, on frugal innovation. The underlying idea of frugal innovation are simplifying products and services to the point where they are good enough meet widespread needs, but not wasteful in terms of excesses or unnecessary functions. The approach has become important in meeting the needs of emerging world, where large population represents significant market, but where individual purchasing power is limited. So why do we need require frugal innovation? According to the UK innovation organization, Nesta, giving a summary why frugal innovation is required in a company due to environmental constraint around climate as we are going through the global warming and climate change energy water and other resources will increase demand for more frugal models of production and consumption new technological platforms are drastically reducing the cost of some forms of innovation creating huge new opportunities for frugal innovators caring for rapidly aging societies while requiring completely new approaches to health and social care, including radically thinking business models and value chains that are apparent in some example of such frugal innovation. So in today's first growing world, markets are in developing and emerging economies where demand for frugal products and services are really high. So if you have a look at an example for frugal innovation, Tata Nano is one of the best examples for frugal innovation. So India is a large economy where the population is intense and it's rarely seen people buying cars. So most of them prefer traveling through bikes and it's risky to run a bike with the whole family. So this is where Tata Nano came in. Ratan Tata promises the citizen that he is gonna provide a car with 1000 pounds. So that's why where he bring the Gen X Nano. So the nano car from Tata Moto is often cited as an example for frugal innovation. However, this car was thought as an expensive version for the Indian market, but it stopped its production in May 2008. Uh, while producing the car at a cheap price, the quality was compromised. So customers were complaining for the quality. This is when they had to shut down their production. So these are the reference list. If you wish to go for more depth, you can have a look at the reference list. Thank you for the session.